Hey, it's Dan here from Nurse Forge. You might see the layer of dirt, fire, hammer, and anvil and think you're seeing me by mistake. You're not. I'm a blacksmith, but I'm also a critical care nurse working in a general ICU with a passion for education. We're going to dive into a nursing case study of a patient, and today the patient's primary problem will be AFib with RVR or rapid ventricular rate. As a quick disclaimer, this case study is not meant to diagnose or recommend specific treatment for any illness. If you are sick, I advise you to start by talking to your healthcare provider. I mean it. Let's take a moment to discuss what AFib is. AFib, or atrial fibrillation, is a condition where the atria of the heart is firing so rapidly that there is no effective contraction, so the muscle tissue simply quivers or fibrillates. The atria will tell the ventricles to beat 500 to 600 times per minute, so the AV node blocks most of these signals, but lets some through. This results in an irregularly irregular heartbeat. Now this is a pretty common arrhythmia, especially in older patients. Some people will be in AFib for short periods of time, others will be in AFib for life. In any case, for the majority of patients, our goal will be rate control. There are three problems that are commonly encountered with AFib. The first and most important is that the patient is at risk for developing a thrombus in the fibrillating atrium. Secondly, when a person is in AFib, they will lose 10 to 30% of their cardiac output due to loss of atrial kick. Third is that as the heart rate rises, the overall efficiency of the heart goes down. So as their heart rate increases, we actually see a decrease in cardiac output. You can see where this might become an issue. If you want to learn more about AFib, I'm going to put a, drop a link at the top of the description. Please note that although this case is based on a real patient of mine, details of the case have been altered to protect patient anonymity. Also, this patient has several uncommon complications to her case, which is why I chose it. So our patient is a 64-year-old woman who presented to the emergency department with a hard, painful lump on her abdomen. She's diagnosed with a large abdominal abscess, but is also noted to be in AFib, rates 70 to 110. The patient states that she has put on about 10 pounds in the last two weeks, has noticed swelling in her legs, and that also she has had trouble lying flat for sleeping, so has been sleeping in a recliner for the past week or so. She is admitted to the medical floor for antibiotics and a surgical consult for the abscesses and internal medicine following for medical management. Patients admitting diagnoses are new onset AFib, fluid overload, and abdominal abscess. Patient past medical history is significant for diabetes type 2, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, myocardial infarction with stent placement to the left anterior descending artery two years ago, and stage 1 to 2 chronic kidney disease. She does not have previous history of AFib to her knowledge. Home medications include atorvastatin, metoprolol, lisinopril, and glipizide. She has a transesophageal echocardiogram completed to evaluate overall heart function due to the AFib and to check for thrombus. Echo shows an EF of 45-50%, to 50%, which is significantly reduced from previous echo, but no thrombus. Patient started on low dose of furosemide to help with fluid overload. Suspect that reduced EF was a result of AFib, which was likely caused by inflammation from the abscess. Also, a non-contrast CT of the abdomen to evaluate the position and size of the abscess. Surgery determines that it will require an IND, which was completed later that day without complication. The following day, the nurse received a phone call from telemetry that the patient's heart rates had suddenly increased from AFib rates 70s to 100s all the way up to AFib with rates of 140 to 160. She checks on the patient, who is hypotensive, uh, with a blood pressure of 80s over 50s and complaining of shortness of breath. Rapid response team called and patient was transferred to critical care unit. On-call cardiologist was consulted to manage patient's AFib and amiodarone 150 mg bolus followed by a 1 mg per minute amiodarone infusion was ordered. Immediately prior to amiodarone administration, patient heart rate was 140s with BP 110 over 60. Patient symptoms had partially resolved. Amiobolus was started approximately 10 seconds into administration. Patient stated she felt funny and then went unresponsive. Telemetry noted patient's heart rate had suddenly gone from 160 beats per minute to 20 beats per minute. BP unmeasurable. Amiodarone stopped and code blue called. Patient achieved ROSC or return to spontaneous circulation after two minutes of CPR. She regained consciousness approximately 30 seconds later. Heart rate went up to 270s at time of ROSC, however then returned to AFib with rates of 140s shortly after. 
Upon analysis of the telemetry, she appeared to have gone into a severe heart block, which occurs in about 1-3% to of patients. Decision was made to attempt for rate control after this time rather than conversion since she had already had a severe adverse reaction to amiodarone. Deltiazem drip, 5-15 to mg per hour, was started instead to attempt for rate control with orders to titrate drip to a goal heart rate of less than 100 beats per minute. After being rate controlled, patient was transitioned off the drip to oral meds and after another day of antibiotics, she converted back to sinus rhythm on her own. She was discharged home a few days after that. I rarely get a chance to follow up with my patients after they leave my care, but this particular patient came up to the floor to look for me when she had to come back to the hospital for a follow-up and a visit to the wound clinic. Her chest was very sore for about two weeks due to the CPR. I apologized and said I was the cause of that. She laughed and said thank you and gave me a hug. It was overall a good outcome for everyone and I am very happy it could be that way. So, I want to take a few moments to summarize a few points I hope you can take away from this case. First, our first goal for patients with AFib is usually rate control. Second, attempts to convert AFib back to sinus rhythm might be done immediately if the onset of AFib is witnessed, the patient is chronically anticoagulated, or the patient becomes unstable due to the AFib, such as the patient in our case study today. Though this should be approached with caution because, number three, one of the main risks associated with AFib is complications due to dislodged blood clots, particularly stroke. Number four, while AFib is a common arrhythmia and many people live with AFib for years or even decades with proper medical management, if people are not properly rate controlled, they can become unstable very quickly. Number five, Attempts to convert AFib do carry some degree of risk, and you should be alert for them and have a plan of action ready. This was not the first, nor was it the last time I had seen a patient who had a severe adverse effect from an attempt to convert AFib, though this one was far and away the worst. Number six, events like this one in the case study are very rare, but they do happen. Respect medications like amiodarone, but do not be afraid to use them, though a cardiology expert should be involved in the patient's care. So that's it for today. I'm hoping to do more of these case studies in the future. If you have a topic you would like a case study on, drop it in the comments down below and I'll see what I can do. Until next time, take care of yourselves and your patients.